حديث نمبر 9 الحديث التاسع عن ابي هريره رضي الله عنه عن ابي هريره عبد الرحمن بن سخر رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ما نهيتكم عنه فاجتنبوه وما امرتكم به فافعلوا منه ما استطعتم فانما اهلك الذين من قبلكم كثره مسائلهم واختلافهم على انبيائهم رواه البخاري ومسلم This hadith is narrated by Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu. His name, as mentioned here, is Abdurrahman ibn Sakhr al-Dawsi. Even though there's a big difference of opinion amongst the, uh, amongst the, uh, the, the ulama of the past as to what his actual name was. Because he was so famously known, as, known by his kunya, there was a difference of opinion as to what his actual name is. But the one that is the most famous is that his name was Abdurrahman ibn Sakhr radiyallahu anhu. He was from the tribe of al-Dawsi. And he became Muslim in the seventh year of the Hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he was called Abu Huraira. And Huraira, uh, Hirra. The word Hirra means cat, in uh, or kitten in Arabic. And he was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi actually gave him this kunya because of the affinity and the love that Abu Huraira had for cats. He always had a small kitten with him. So you see some of the narration the Prophet sallallahu alayhi would refer to him as Abu Huraira or Ya Aba Hirra, for example. So that was, that was him radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And we mentioned him briefly last week because we mentioned that from the companions who narrated the most a hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he was the one that narrated the most hadith from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. And Abu Huraira, when he initially came to Al-Madina, uh, he was from Ahlul Sufa. Ahlul Sufa were those companions who did not have as much money and they used to have a portion in the back of the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and they would stay there. So Abu Huraira was from the companions who, when he came to Medina, he spent every moment where the Prophet ﷺ was not at home or with his family, and he was in the masjid and amongst the people, the, Abu Huraira was constantly with him, right? And Abu Huraira was one that Allah has blessed with an incredible intel- intellect and, 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 and memory, and he memorized everything that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said and did. And he was constantly with him. See some of the other companions, they were also with the Prophet ﷺ, but a lot of them also had other priorities. They had to go work, they had some business, they were farmers, right? You even see some, there's a narration where Umar radiallahu anhu, uh, he used to have a friend, one of his friends, they used to have an agreement where they would study, they would study the statements of the Prophet sallam together. But because, that, because of the fact that they had to go work, so Umar, when he would be out working, his friend would be with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and then when Umar would be with the Prophet sallam, his friend would be working, and then later they would come together and discuss what they heard from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's another long hadith, but the point is, not all of the companions had the fortune to always be with the Prophet sallallahu as some of the other companions did. And the Prophet sallallahu knew and realized the, the keen nature and the special nature of how intellectual Abu Huraira was and how keen he was about learning and memorizing. So he made it a point to keep him close to him alayhi salatu wa salam. He said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said in this hadith, Prophet said, مَا نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْهُ فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ Whatever I prevent you or I command you to stay away from, or I have forbidden you from doing, stay away from it. وَمَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِهِ فَافْعَلُوا مِنْهُ مَا اسْتَضَعْتُمْ And whatever I command you to do, do it to the best of your ability. Do it to the best of your ability. Then the Prophet ﷺ, he said, فَإِنَّمَا أَهْلَكَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ because, because the nations and the people that came before you the cause that destroyed them and the reason for them being destroyed was kathratu masailihim them asking too many questions wa ikhtilafuhum ala anbiya'ihim and them opposing their prophets that they, that were sent to them okay the principle in this hadith is that uh, the obedience of the commands of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam okay whatever the prophet sallam brings we obey and whatever the prophet sallam prohibits us from doing we stay away from this is a very important qaida, right? And this qaida is established in the Quran. وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Whatever Allah, whatever the Prophet ﷺ tells you to do, you do it. And whatever the Prophet ﷺ tells you to stay away from, you stay away from. طيب. Very important thing we need to pay attention to here. Number one, when the Prophet ﷺ mentioned about the prohibitions, he said, فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ Stay away from it. 
However, when he said to do, when he gave the command to do that which has been commanded, what did he say? Fatu minhu mastata'tum. Do them to the best of your ability. Okay, how come the Prophet ﷺ did not say, whatever you are told to stay away from, stay away from it to the best of your ability? Anybody want to take a guess? Why, why did he not make that condition for the, for the nahi and for the prohibition? Right. Because the reason why is because the Prophet ﷺ is making clear for us that we have to stay away from the prohibitions. Yeah, a person might forget and make a mistake, but you can, the mentality shouldn't be, oh, I'll stay away from it to the best of my ability. Because if you do that, then you're going to end up doing it. So there's a red line. You cannot do that which is forbidden. As for those things that you have been commanded to do, you, you have to do it, but because we're not perfect, you try your very best. You're not going to always get it perfect, but you try your very best. You work hard to make to, to, to do your best to be as perfect as you can. Right? So, fa'tu minhu mastata'tum. Do it to the best of your ability. Right? The Prophet ﷺ then said in the next phrase that look, the nations that came before you were destroyed for two reasons. Number one, they asked too many questions. Okay? Why is that a problem? Because a lot of times, as we see in the Quran as well, the, nation, the people of the past will ask questions, but those questions will either be questions that are unnecessary, and also those unnecessary questions will only make things more difficult for them. To the point where they will not be able to fulfill now what they've been told to do. لذلك Allah in the Quran says, لا تسألوا عن أشياء إن تبد لكم تسؤكم O you who believe, do not ask about things that if you find out about those things, it will be something that you will not like, you will dislike it, it will be difficult for you to do. Right? You know the, 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 the qissa of Al-Baqarah in the Quran. Surah Al-Baqarah is a good example, right, of how Bani Israel would ask all these questions to the point where they were unable to fulfill that. Right? Musa alayhi salam said to them, Inna Allah ya'murukum an tathbahu baqarah. Allah told you slaughter a cow. Find a cow. A lot of cows. Take one, slaughter it. Khalas. And it was based on an incident, by the way. The story is long, but it was based on an incident that somebody, yani somebody was killed and they're trying to find out who the murderer was. And the, the qissa is long, but from the ways to figure out who the murderer was, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa to tell the people to slaughter, a, to slaughter a cow and there was a process that came after. But so the, the Quran did not mention the whole story. It only mentioned a certain portion of that incident. To, and, this, and the lesson there was when you ask too many questions and you don't obey the prophets and the messengers, it becomes problematic and it results in you being destroyed. So in this particular situation, Allah told them, as Musa said, slaughter a cow, right? Their response, because they were trying to figure out who did this murder, when Musa told them, slaughter a cow, they thought Musa salam was playing with them. We're trying to find out who killed this person, you're telling us to slaughter a cow? Atatakhiduna huzua? Right? And, then, and, and, and Musa salam said, this is the command of Allah. Don't be ignorant. May Allah protect us from being from the ignorant. Follow the command. Then they began asking all these questions. Okay? Ask your Lord, what type of cow? Okay? Le okay, they told him, a cow that has no marks, no nothing. Okay. Ask your Lord, what color cow? The response came, a yellow cow. So now the cow has no stripes and no marks, and it has to be a yellow cow. Right? Okay, this, they started asking questions until it became impossible for them to fulfill what they're supposed to do in the first place. Right? And we have many examples like that. لا تسألوا عن أشياء إن تبد لكم تسؤكم So here the Prophet is saying, he's telling the companions, don't ask too many questions. Okay, now for you to have a better understanding of this hadith, it's important we understand the, the, the context of the hadith. Because we mentioned last week that the hadith of Umar, there was a context that led up to Abdullah ibn Umar mentioning the hadith of Jibreel, right? This particular hadith was actually during Hajj. It was during Hajj. And some of the, one of the companions asked the Messenger of Allah, because the Prophet ﷺ, they know that they were told their Hajj is obligatory amongst them to do. Um, uh, hajj is obligatory for them to do. So one of the companions said, Ya Rasulullah, is it obligatory for us to do Hajj every year? So the Prophet ﷺ said, it's only obligatory for you to do Hajj once in your lifetime. مَا نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْهُ فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ وَمَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِهِ 
فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ مَا سَطَعْتُمْ I told you to do hajj once in your lifetime, whatever I tell you to do, you do. Whatever I tell you to stay away from, stay away from. Because now if you ask too many questions, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, hajj is obligatory for you to do every year, you won't be able to fulfill it. فَإِنَ أَهْلَكَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ كَثْرَةُ مَسَائِلِهِمْ وَاخْتِلَافُهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنْبِيَائِهِمْ Then what came to destroy the people that came before you was asking too many questions. Questions that are unnecessary or questions that are only going to make things more difficult for you. Right? Generally speaking, there's nothing wrong with asking questions if you're trying to understand something, if you're trying to see clarity on something, right? But if the question is of no benefit or it's only going to bring you more problems, then don't engage in it. Don't ask. And this is how the companions were. This is how some of the Sahaba were. They made it a point to avoid asking. They would. They would. They used to love it. That's why they used to love it when the Arab would come or somebody from the from the. From the, yani, the better one would come. They used to love it because the better one would come and he had no filter. He was raw. He would ask whatever he wanted to ask. Right? And they used to enjoy that because they wanted to hear the Prophet's responses. And the Prophet would not ignore people's questions. He would answer it. Right? So sometimes people would ask questions that might bring them more problems. Right? And there was a similar incident and there's a hadith that mentions it where a person kept on asking the Prophet about something to do with his lineage, and then it came out later that he discovered that the person that he thought was his father was not his actual father, and it brought him more mashakil and more problems, right? So sometimes asking questions that are unnecessary might bring you problems. But the point of this hadith is, the qa'idah is, whatever Allah tells us to do, or sorry, whatever the Messenger of Allah tells us to, tells us to do, we do it. And whatever the Messenger of Allah tells us to stay away from, we stay away from.